Hey fellow tennis nerds and welcome to another tennis nerd racket review. This time it's the new prestige 2021 rackets that I look into. I've been playing these for a while now. Head was nice to send me a couple of demos early on which I really like. Gives me time to really understand what's going on with the frames. Try a few different string setups and really get into the new rackets. And uh, the prestige line is, is one of, of my favorite lines of all time. I've always enjoyed the uh, the control and the feel and uh, the plushness uh, of these frames they're very predictable yes they are more for advanced players overall but I also really enjoy just how they how they perform and I feel and I feel like I can swing out uh, with no hesitation which I really think helps my game overall so uh, always been a big fan of the prestigious uh, going back to the prestige classic 600 uh, I'm actually playing still with the Prestige MP from 2019, the red one. Some players loved that, some players didn't like the cosmetic so much, but I think the overall consensus was that that was an improvement, a clear update uh, to the previous Graphene Touch and the Graphene XT that came before. And uh, what they did then was that they, they upped the head size of the MP, which was great. Uh, they also had a mid-size version. For these new rackets, there are no mid-size version. I think it's just not selling enough. It's not a uh, really um, viable racket to have in the marketplace. Sadly, I know there are some of mid fans out there. I still enjoy playing with mids, but I also understand from a company standpoint that it's not easy to sell a mid-size racket today when most modern frames are 100 square inches and they're quite thick beam and powerful so we should be happy that we have a prestige still it's still a strong line but i think it might be the weakest line in terms of sales for head because uh, most players want a bit more power a bit more spin a bit more forgiveness but uh, the good thing is that they do have that in uh, two models here that they are a little bit easier to use and then they have two more advanced models so i got four rackets to review and to make it a bit more confusing they've changed the names of these rackets so uh, that's something i'm gonna keep repeating if it gets a bit uh, complicated uh, let me know i'm trying to clarify as much as i can i still use the prestige mp from two years ago that looks like this and uh, the prestige mp it's a 98 square inch 320 gram unstrung 1820 pattern a player frame but it has a bigger head size than the previous prestige mps the naming of this frame felt a bit weird because the mp in heads lineup is usually the more kind of uh, mainstream or the more middle ground racket the speed mp is not as as demanding to use as the speed pro and so on the extreme mp is not as demanding as the the extreme tour etc so they wanted to align all these racket lines as you know head is uh, the company that has the most racket models and uh, they just want to make sure it's pretty clear from the cpi the power scale they have and uh, the number of rackets they have from different silos that it all makes sense i think it was a good decision but it's going to create some initial confusion so hopefully i can clarify it for you but we'll start with the mp so the prestige mp the most demanding racket will now be called the prestige pro as you can see it's it's kind of a burgundy black red paint uh, reminiscent of the graphene touch which i really liked i really liked that paint job the prestige graphene touch was perhaps the best looking paint job this is still nice has these kind of matte parts and a bit more glossy parts here they they are clear with the technologies here the box beam and uh, something that is called oxetic that we will get to and the elongated shaft which is the the typical prestige feature of these frames also very thin beams so in this case the mp that i use uh, is now called the pro so these are pretty much the same racket and i will get to why they are very close i strung them up the same i compare them uh, 100 percent to each other and i will let you know what i think the mp is now the pro so that's one thing to remember it makes sense the mp from 2019 was hard to use 
should be called a pro, should have a bit more advanced name. I think that makes all the sense in the world. The specs stay the same, so the specs of the pro stays the same as the old MP. But we'll get to that as well. MP now is the previous tour racket. So this one was called Tour in its red edition, but now it's called the MP. And this is kind of a middle ground in the Prestige lineup. I'll give you the specs. Uh, 99 square inches, so this is an interesting, kind of more modern version of a Prestige uh, with an 18-19 string pattern and they a 21.5 millimeter beam. And what they've done here, uh, added a few grams to the racket, which I think is good because the other one I felt like I needed to customize a bit, I needed to up the weight. This one comes five grams heavier, 310 grams unstrung. So uh, I think that was a good idea uh, to, to increase the weight uh, a few grams of this one. So the old tour is now called the MP. Previous Prestige Pro was a 95 screen, 1619 pattern, 22 millimeter beam, something that makes you think of a 6195 from Wilson, but with a op more open pattern, uh, a little bit lower weight, 315 grams. The old Pro from 2019 is now called Tour. So the Prestige Pro is now called the Prestige Tour, still 95 square inches, 1690 pattern, the specs are unchanged here. I've added the leather grip, don't be fooled, it's just something I'm trying different feels, different weights, different customizations, so I really understand the frame. As so it comes with a normal synthetic grip, just want to point that out. But it looks great with a leather grip and if that's what you like, you can always obviously add that to the frame. So the Prestige Tour from 2021 is uh, the old Pro. And with the previous generation of Prestiges, they had the Prestige S, which was the tweener style Prestige. 99 square inches, 295 grams, 1619 pattern, a bit thicker beam, a little bit easier to use, a bit more spin, a bit more power, you know, the, the works. And that one is now called MPL, so MP Light. That's the one with the 1619 pattern, slightly thicker beam, but not a whole lot, 21.5 millimeter. And they upped the, the weight here as well. Uh, to 5 grams. So it's now 300 grams unstrung, 99 square inches and 21.5 uh, millimeter beam, 1619 pattern. The MPL, which was the old S. So what's new with these Prestiges technology wise is that they've replaced the spiral fibers that made the Prestige softer, that made most rackets softer compared to the Graphene 360. When they added the plus uh, that was spiral fibers, it became softer, a little bit more arm friendly, better feel overall. I think the update from 360 to 360 plus was better overall across the board of their rackets. Uh, but now it's called Oxetic in these frames. That's something they will introduce for all their rackets. And that's a main carbon construction technology placed in the yoke piece. And that's supposed to create this kind of flex sensation, softer feel, despite not having spiral fibers in the layup. That's the change. And to be quite frank, I haven't really felt much of a difference. Uh, these frames play pretty much like the older ones. They do have a higher swing weight overall, so I do feel like they are a bit more stable, a bit more uh, solid perhaps, but that could be a swing weight thing. But overall, I think that the frame in terms of feel and performance is pretty much unchanged. So if you love the old ones, there's no need to upgrade unless you really like the design. Let's just get that out of the way. Why change something that's not broken? That might be a question. Or maybe sometimes we expect a bit more, but we'll get into that coming up. I briefly mentioned the specs. Let's quickly talk through them. Uh, so we have the Prestige Pro, which was the previous MP that has the lowest power level, CPI 200. Uh, 98 square inches, 320 grams, 31 centimeter balance on strung. You add strings, you're gonna have around 32 centimeter balance, which is six, seven points head light. 20 millimeter beam, nice and thin. I like that, big thumbs up. Standard length on all of these rackets, 27 inches or 685 millimeters. The Pro is 1820 and will be released around uh, end of November, 21st November. So that's the Prestige MP, it's on from 2019, now called the Pro, pretty much unchanged specs. Feel very, very similar to the older version. I cannot really detect anything. I did notice that it's specced up a little bit higher in the swing weight with 327 strung, which uh, is kind of my wheelhouse 100%. So I do like to add a little bit of weight on my older Prestige MPs to get them up to around 327, 330. And then that's where I'm happy. Beautiful. 
the Prestige Tour, which was previously called Pro, that's also, um, that's CPI 300, 95 square inches, 315 grams, 31.5 centimeter balance, 22 millimeters and a 16-19 pattern. This one measured at a whopping 347 swing weight strung and that's with the head links factory string. I measured them all with the factory string just to, to get an idea. I did really play pretty well with this frame but, but overall when you, when you get a bit tired it's, it's too heavy. This is a quality control issue, this is not what most of these Prestige Pro rackets will be uh, but I got a bit unlucky there and got one that was pretty pretty uh, over spec. It specs out well in weight and balance pretty much but it's just at the swing weight meaning that a lot of the weight is centered around the, the hoop of the frame making it quite sluggish to swing. So I really struggled to get good racket head speed on the Pro because of its high swing weight. I haven't measured any other frames but I'm pretty sure that when we see the tennis warehouse averages it will be lower so I wouldn't be too worried about this but I got a bit unlucky and it did hamper some of my experience. When I play well with a heavy swing weight, I play really well, but then that will happen more uh, rarely uh, usually. So that's the, the issue there. Prestige MP, which was previously called Tor, 400 CPI on the scales, a little bit more powerful, 99 square inches, 310 grams, now unstrung, so they added 5 grams, 32 centimeter balance, unstrung, 21.5 millimeter beam, and an 18-19 string pattern. Uh, this one, just a little beefier, a little bit more power, a little bit more stability over the predecessor that I felt like I had to customize, so I think this is a good update actually measured it strung at 331 which is pretty high so I wouldn't be going for this unless you're ready for a 330 swing weight. Either I got those two frames, the, the Pro, the Tor and the MP uh, were kind of over spec for me but, uh, but overall I think it's good to have a little bit more weight on this racket. Still 331 strung is pretty high for most players so uh, but you probably know this when you're moving into prestige territory that they won't be easy to use. That's the thing. You need a bit more weight to generate some power. So that's pretty, pretty standard. And then we have the prestige MPL, which was previously called S. It's 500 on the CPI scale and 99 square inches, 300 grams, a bit heavier than the predecessor. 31.5 centimeter balance, 21.5 millimeter and a 1619 pattern. So more spin there, more power, a little bit um, easier to play with, but not as easy to control as the other frames. And the MPL uh, swing weight was 318.5 with the factory string. That's pretty decent. I think that's a good swing weight for this frame. I uh, don't really need to customize it a lot more for what this is. It's supposed to be a fast swinging experience and I thought that was pretty much spot on but um, two rackets were pretty high on the swing weight. Don't have the, the listed swing weights, I don't have the listed stiffnesses but playing with all these frames I don't think there's much of a change in stiffness. Uh, as I said the, the, it, there is a minimal change to how these rackets play compared to the predecessor. So how do these rackets play? I think that's why you're here overall but yeah they play very very similar to the previous versions. I haven't really detected much of any difference. You really can switch in between the old Prestige MP and the new Prestige Pro which is the same racket and they have the same specs and I don't feel much of a difference between Oxetic Tech and Spiral Fiber Tech. It just feels like they they pretty much didn't want to change anything drastic and just usher in this era of Oxetic tech uh, with the prestigious in a safe way, not much of a difference, uh, just a bit of a design upgrade and, and that's it. Can be a bit disappointing to some, I was pretty happy how the old prestigious played or I was very happy generally, it was, it was a very good release I think from head and I still play with the prestige MP so for me that they didn't change it much it wasn't a big issue. Unless you're really in love with the paint job, you're probably gonna save some money by just going for for the previous model and uh, getting a cheaper price or buying it used uh, instead of spending quite a bit of money on these newer rackets. I mean, the recommended retail price of these frames is almost 300 euros, so it's quite an investment uh, or 260 dollars in the US market and that's quite an expensive tool and uh, if you're buying several rackets, which most uh, you know advanced players or people that are very serious about their tennis do, 
it's gonna cost you a pretty penny. So you people will look for shortcuts in maybe getting an older retail version, the previous version, which plays uh, pretty much the same and just looks very red. And this one is more of a safe bet in design. What I can say about the models that got five gram increase, and I think that was a good thing. They play with a little bit more stability, a little bit more power. Overall, the swing weights are a little bit higher maybe on average. We will see when Tennis Warehouse measure their average ratings. I only get one racket per, per model, so I can't really you know, assess beyond measuring uh, the rackets I have. But I have, have a feeling that they might be a little bit higher in swing weight, which I think is a good choice. The Prestige MP previously came in at 320-ish. And now if it's closer to 330, I think it makes more sense. We're gonna play with the Prestige Pro which weighs 320, it's similar to the previous MP, but it's the problem. The issue with the higher swing weight is that when you get a, a higher spec, a, a over spec, like I got with the previous Prestige Pro, now called Tor, then you have a racket that's gonna be almost impossible to use for some or very, very demanding, and you're not gonna be able to match these rackets. And that's just keeps frustrating me overall, all that these quality control issues keep plaguing the, the industry and, and tennis players worldwide. You're buying something for uh, 300 euros almost, and, and you expect that it should be pretty much on spec. I mean, there's some variance in all manufacturing, but with tennis rackets, each gram makes a bit of a difference. So you can't really allow for as much of a difference. And I think when you're getting a 347 swing weight frame, it's, it's not gonna be the most positive experience to, to some players. So I think that's a little bit of a concern with this, uh, with overall. And, and the head is not worse than anyone else. I think they're all pretty much the same. Um, Yonex were, were supposed to be better, but I'm not sure if that still rings true when it comes to swing weights. Uh, it's an issue overall in the industry that the quality control is a little bit flimsy and, and that they don't give out swing weights, which I think is very important. I mean, when you can take three frames and you just air swing them and you will feel a difference if the swing weights are different. You, you will feel it. I mean, you might not feel three, four points, but when you get up to 10 points, you're gonna feel it for sure. Especially if you have already a frame that you're playing with and you just wanna buy another one, you wanna make sure they are close and you can just switch in between them and then the one is, is much higher, it's gonna be a problem. I've talked about this way too much, but it, it yeah keeps coming up in every review, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. I hope there will be a review soon where I can say, uh, yeah, they uh, promised that this will be within five points swing weight and uh, yeah, that's it. So who are these rackets for? Uh, starting with the, the new Pro, which was the old MP. Yeah, this is the most demanding of the bunch. It has the lowest CPI scale. It's, it's quite a, a, a tough racket to use. If you need some extra help with power and spin, I just love that I can just swing freely and really trust the frame to give the control. And actually, if I, can, if I play with more top spin, it actually produces decent spin. So my favorite is the new Prestige Pro or the old Prestige MP. That's the best frame for me uh, of this bunch. I just feel like I feel most at home with that one, really connected to the ball, nice soft feel, arm friendly, just an overall great performer if you're in the market for a control racket and it's still easier to use than the previous Prestige MPs going back to the Graphene Touch when they were 95 square inches. Those were, were still demanding, but this ones, these ones uh, are, are good and uh, yeah, very happy with that still, uh, probably not switching unless the Extreme Tour can convince me, uh, but we will see. <laughs> the new Tour, which was the old Pro, that's a, a more of a, a weapon, it has a higher CPI, 300, a little bit more power, a little bit more spin. I think from what I heard of the previous review, most players like that one a little bit more. I still prefer the MP, as I said, but more of an attacking weapon and the smaller head size, 95 square inches, more going back to that heritage of the old Prestige Pro, which was always 95, 16, 19, pretty much. So um, it, it's a racket, you have to be pretty confident to use this racket with the 95 screen shed size, but it's gonna give you a little bit more power thanks to the thicker beams, like the higher stiffness and the more open pattern. Uh, it still requires like a, a pretty solid player to play with it because the sweet spot is relatively small. Still, nice frame, uh, especially if you get a swing weight that's not up to the 350s almost, like I got. The new Prestige MP, which was previously called Tour, it's an interesting one. I call it the sleeper racket of this line because it's something that, you know, some players tried and were like, okay, this is interesting, but they might not, they didn't, didn't make the change. I was a little bit like that, but I felt like there was, you know, maybe something a little bit missing, not that 100% control uh, that I like where I can feel more relaxed in just going for it. 
but this frame is still very interesting with the 1819 pattern. A little bit more weight now with the 310 grams. This is an interesting competitor now to the Extreme Tour, where you get a little bit more spin, but not all the way to the Extreme Tour, but more on the lines of a Radical Pro. So it kind of really lands in between the Radical Pro and the Extreme Tour. And I find that uh, fascinating with the head frames. They have so many frames now that you can almost pinpoint your exact spec and find a racket without any customization. Maybe that's the idea, but there's so many different frames. So if you feel like the Radical Pro is a little bit too firm, and you want a little bit more of a, of a cupping effect in the string bed and you want to reduce maybe 5 grams, then you have the, the Prestige MP. It's really a head racket for everyone. I think that's what they're aiming for and they're succeeding, but they're also creating some confusion, of course. But, but there's definitely you know, frames that really come close when it comes to how they play and the specs and so on. But this one is nice. Uh, I played a little bit more stable, a little bit more power than the predecessor. The high swing weight for me, 331 uh, strung, but, but still a very nice frame. And I, I did enjoy that more than the, the Prestige Tour, the old Pro, because I felt like I, I could get a little bit more help. 99 screen inches and 18, 19 pattern is pretty unique on the market and actually works pretty well together as well. So uh, interesting frame, definitely worth checking out if you're a player that like to play with a control frame but you need a little bit more help so it just falls in this kind of typical 98 square inch with the t fight rs 305 and the extreme tour those kind of frames that's where this one ends up the old prestige s now called the prestige mpl that's definitely more of a tweener frame players that like the gravity tour maybe or the gravity mp even or the speed mp that's where we get into this kind of in between battle again you put the gravity MP and the speed MP and this one kind of slots straight in between them Pretty plush feel but still more power more spin more of a tweener style spec You definitely feel like the string bit is a little bit softer Yeah, there's a little bit more of a cupping effect like I said the, the ball sinks into the string bed kind of more of a lively feel I, I feel like that that um, really happens with the prestige MP light very close to a speed MP in, in feel and performance. I feel like these ones are, are very similar. Not as much power as the speed MP, but yet not super far away from it either. They, they are kind of in that middle ground of, of tennis rackets. So not the strongest identity of a frame, but yeah, it's, it's another one that kind of slots in between the, the huge armada of uh, head tennis rackets. There's so many now, but you can definitely find your spec in the head range. I would be extremely surprised otherwise. So that's pretty much it uh, for this Head Prestige 2021 Rackets review. It's a solid update but it's pretty much the same thing. There's a design uh, update, uh, they look nice, pretty safe bet to go with uh, predominantly darker colors uh, but obviously they, they wanted to change it up from the red. I would personally have liked to see more of a throwback to the prestige classic paint job and that would have been really awesome but maybe they would just don't want to go make it too similar but that would have been really cool to see the prestige classic 600 paint job and uh, back in the prestige overall these rackets play very similar in certain models it's pretty much an, a copy of the previous generation with a different design but the rackets that got a bit more weight they also got a bit more weight so they actually uh, have a bit more stability a bit more power and that was a good update but for the racket I like, the 2019 MP, that's now called Pro, uh, I could easily just mix them up in the bag and then just take one out and they would play pretty much the same. I didn't feel much of a difference at all. Uh, keen to hear what you think if you played them side by side like I did with the same string. Uh, did you feel anything? Was there a difference? Uh, I'm also keen to see other reviews, but, but this is my personal take on these frames, that they, they didn't update much. The Oxetic offers a nice plush feel similar to the spiral fibers so it's just like they replaced that and got the same same result out of it but if you really like this design and if you want a new prestige go ahead and check these out these are high quality rackets excellent for the advanced player who can generate their own pace uh, but they also have these more tweener style with the prestige mp light which is a little bit easier to use or the prestige mp which which is a bit more for the advanced player but still a little bit more uh, energy return than the, for example a blade 98 uh, or something like that so um, definitely an interesting line of rackets prestige still going strong why change something that ain't broken maybe that's how they reasoned from head because they didn't change much here thumbs up but 
not much of a change to be honest it kind of comes down to the very very minimal changes and the design upgrade that's my verdict anyway if you like this review if you like the stuff i do please uh, click like and subscribe to the channel that gives me uh, some extra motivation to keep going uh, if you want to support me in my work please join patreon.com slash tennis nerd where you get more content every week uh, for only a few bucks a month but you can also buy something from my affiliates in the description below you have to use the links there if you would like to do that i'd be very happy obviously no pressure i just want you to get the best gear for your game and if that means that you need to just customize what you have get a new string or do whatever that's fine too uh, it's all about finding what works for you so that's all have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.